Bhavanaktu Sahaviryam Karvahe Tejasvina Vadhitamastu Mavit Vishavahe Through the series of teachings that we have been exploring here at the satsang, we looked at three levels of reality and we realized that the imaginary reality constructed in the mind, Pratibhasika, gets replaced when we wake up into the everyday world of the empirical reality, Vyavaharika. And just as the image in the mirror comes and goes but definitely has some substratum which is stable, in the same way both of these realities come and go and yet they have a permanent substratum which we are identifying as Satchit Ananda Brahman. Then in the next session, we looked at causation and we looked at the nature of this world which we find so concrete, so tangible and yet we found that this world holds no ground and no power and no reality when we are in a dream world. And no amount of water of this empirical world will quench our thirst in the dream world where only dream water can quench our thirst. So we recognize that just as the world of waking comes and then goes, the world of dream or imagination comes and goes, foundation of both is nothing but a projection from the mind then therefore the ultimate causation is not where um, um, something, some power has created necessarily because then questions are raised about what is that power, what is the raw material uh, and why was this created and not that and where is that power now, has it entered, is it outside and nor is it just grown randomly uh, from a series of chemicals come together but actually there never was a world though while it is something that we subscribe through through our mind it exists just as as long as we do not know that a rope is lying in the room, we believe in the snake, we see it, we even see it raise its hood, we panic, we sweat and for us the reality is there is a snake. But once the light of knowledge is lit, we realize it is a rope. In the same way, this world is an appearance, vivartavad, just and it is the subject that becomes more important than what is seen. Because we found out that the subject has the power. The subject decides whether it is seeing a particle or a wave. It is a subject's consciousness. So now we are going to, in this satsang, focus upon the subject, which is you, us, me. So the average human being who is inquiring and studying about Vedanta and is lost in the samsara, the world of repetitive existence of birth, death and suffering, this person is called a jiva. The jiva says, 
this is my body this is my breath my breath is long my breath is short my mind is overwhelmed my mind is calm my intellect cannot solve this problem my intellect woke up and solved the problem anything that the jiva says is mine cannot be the jiva just like when i say my plate of food that means there is a separation between me and what is mine so definitely then who is the jiva who am i begins the inquiry for the uninitiated i am what i see in the mirror but again by common sense example vedant says if you can notice it if you can claim it to be yours then the one claiming it is you not what has been claimed my shirt my skin my breath my thought my health so there are many things that we attach <coughs> this my to so begins now a series of explorations into who am i vedanta says that you are none but atman and atman is co equal to co equal to brahman you are that everything else in you is coming and going and changing but you are the unchanging satchitananda the world of names and forms changes so also you take on new bodies and new names and new race and a new story but you remain fundamentally unchanged fire cannot burn you time cannot age you sorrow cannot hurt you disease cannot touch you you are param brahma <coughs> now so far to know that i am that first i have to investigate what all i have got lost into what all i feel i am because by default i have become attached to my body and i think that is me what are you saying i am that supreme reality but my shoulder is hurting why can't i heal myself my heart is breaking so we are reminded that you are pratyagatma means your atman is seated deep within and you will have to turn within and go through the ignorance which is imposed due to the cosmic nuisance called maya which we have discussed and we will continue discussing and so there is a forgetfulness of your real nature in order to bring about the right memory of your true power let us investigate the jiva all this time we only thought we had one body but vedanta says you have three bodies three sharira vedanta says that you not only have three bodies but you have five personalities kosha panchakam vedanta says not only do you have five personalities but you have avastha traya you undergo three states of consciousness repeatedly you change from one to another so in this so called experience of life and birth and existence let us explore the jiva which is the self the self of the everyday self and let us try to dig deeper so the first body is the gross body this is the body that is you are that you think is you most of the time we think it is me and then when it will be no more i am no more and the raw material of this body is the sthula panchi mahabhutani now those of you who are students here you know panchi mahabhuta so the five great elements these also are in the sthula gross form and the subtle form 
So sthula means gross. So the sthula panche mahabhutas create this physical body. What is its functions? Its function is that it is a ayatanam. It is a temporary abode for your true Atman to <coughs> exist in. We need an address, body.com. <laughs> and this is where I exist in my consciousness right now while I am awake. Because in dream I might live in a caterpillar body. But for now I am here in this body. And it is a female body. It is certain years old. It is um, having a certain uh, structure, function. So we uh, mainly do transactions through this body. We have five karmendriyas, five organs of action, which uh, the senses are internal, but we use our limbs, our hands, our legs, our mouth, our reproductive organs and our elimination organs to uh, pay debt of karma. We create karma and we receive karma through this body. So if karma is tracking us, it will track us and find us based on this body. Just as the mother cow is standing in 1000 cows and the calf will find its mother in the same way the karma we have created in the past life will find us. So the whole purpose is that it serves as a tenement and its nature, what is its nature? It is subject to change. It is subject to modifications. That is why the great Shastra of Ayurveda said it will change but here is how to age gracefully, beautifully and healthily. So it changes and there are Shadvikaraha six types of modifications. The first modification is when it just arrives, just it from potential unmanifest, it just appears in the first moment in the womb. It has become asti, it has taken form. Then the next change is when it is born. The third form is as soon as it is born, it starts growing. Vardhate. After it has reached a certain age or 15, 16 in women, 18, 20 in men, at that time it stops growing but it starts metamorphosing. It just starts changing in its own place. It just constantly, there are adult modifications. This is the um, fourth change. Then the fifth change begins around the fourth decade when the decay starts beginning. No matter what you do, how you live, you will start begin to grow old. And then the final is Maranam or Nashaha, death. Because this body cannot live beyond 120 years maximum according to our Shastra. And actually we have done such a great job with our lives, we die even sooner and we celebrate anybody who lives till 100, we get so surprised. But actually we had come with 120 years of this physical warranty of this body, but after the moment of death you cannot keep that body without special processes because it starts rotting and smelling and becoming a house of such filth and mess that it cannot be kept. When it is dropped by you who is Atman, you used a house but when you are done you drop it. But then what remains after death is very much confusing to modern people and they make up all sorts of things about it and uh, religious people, but Vedant clarified that something else remains, which is your subtle body. Now, the gross body, one thing important for you to remember is, there is a uniqueness, there is a special thing about this is that it is objectively available for everybody to see. Everybody can see your gross body. 
but you also have a subtle body which is made up of sukshma mahabhutani or sukshma mahabhutas and nobody can see them only you can see it <coughs> the raw material is the subtle mahabhutas and do you know this internal body has organs and you have 19 organs which modern science cannot see so cannot discuss so cannot heal but the science of vedant the science of yoga the science of ayurveda are fully available aware of them we were just teaching fourth and fifth year students and some of the discussions were happening around this sukshma sharira the 19 organs five of them are your panchajnana indriya or your five sense organs your sense organs are subtle eye is called the golakam it is only a physical structure this is only a structure the sense lives in the subtle body that is why when the subtle body separates from the gross body eye can be there but no vision ear can be there but no hearing tongue can be there but no perception skin can be there but no touch nose can be there but no smell of the roses and the incense that we pile on the physical body which has been discarded so therefore the five sense organs panchajnana indriya is five panchakarma indriya hands legs phallus all of these things with which we create karma reproduce create a race they are all again in the located in the physical body but the indriya the karma indriya because of which you can transact and act upon the world lives in this sukshma body so that is 10 then you have pancha pranaha the pancha pranaha is very nice concept which is related to vata dosha so this pancha prana subtle level lives and the sukshma sharira or in the sukshma body pranaya swaha so prana prana is responsible for our respiratory system apana is responsible for our elimination system samana is responsible for all the energy in our digestive system um vayana is responsible for circulation of everything intelligence thoughts food into every area of our body by the vayana prana and finally udana prana is the reversal system as in you breathe in and then you breathe out or when you when you descend into this body you breathe in and when you leave this body it is a final exhalation so this is the final process of reversal so these panch pranas also live in our sukshma body and for those of you who are ayurved students now you can understand the importance of vata dosha even over pitt and kapha dosha because vata dosha or prana is part of our sukshma sharira and it is regulating everything whereas the body is just moving like a puppet so it is responsible for not only every aspect of our physiology but also psychology in the sukshma sharira four more organs live the first one is called manaha or manas which is our emotional faculty then you have chittam which is our memory faculty and this memory faculty is recording audio and video every impression of this panchmahabhuta world in dream and in awake state not only in this lifetime but every lifetime possible imagine what a memory slab you have so chittam is that chitta chittam where you keep everything together and then you have ahankara which is the reflectional faculty the ego faculty which says i which 
connects everything to one. And finally, you have buddhi, which is your rational faculty, your cognitive faculty, and your discriminative faculty. All these four also belong to your sukshma sharira. And that is why when at death we say sukshma sharira leaves along with the atman, only sthula sharira or body remains is this body that is lying there decomposing you. Now look at the sukshma sharira. It also has a limit. But it lives much longer. It does not end. Your physiology and your psychology, what you are thinking, will not end until pralaya. There is a concept of pralaya when what Brahman, the appearance starts, the universe begins and the universe folds. So as long as this universe or this dream is, you are it. Your sukshma sharira is there. And that is why now you can understand when people say, I could see my family crying over my dead body because Atman has the senses intact. It may not be able to talk, but it knows because faculty of knowing, faculty of seeing, faculty is all there in the Sukshma Shari. So Vedanta is teaching us more and more about our being. And finally there is, but this, the difference between sthula body and sukshma body or subtle body is, this body is private to you. Only you know it. Nobody can see it. That is why nobody understands you. No matter what you feel, what you talk, how much you write, there is a difference between when you try to bring your subtle truth into reality because it is private to you. Only you know it. Finally, Vedanta says you have a third body. This third body is called causal body or Karana Sharira. Karana means that which is the cause. It is literally the substratum. Everything has a substratum. In, Ved, in Vedant, everything has a substratum. So these two bodies have a substratum in the causal body. So what does it contain of? It's contained of the other two. When the other two do not exist, they exist in seed form. So even in Pralaya, when the universe exists, you can say, thank God, I'll be done. Now, you know, many people commit suicide, they lose one body, but there's the other. Right? So you go, oh, okay, I think I can get rid of me when this universe ends. Well, no, you're just going to go into your causal body. Everything is contained in that. And what, just like a tree, is contained in a seed. And there is a beautiful teaching in the Upanishad that you, the, the teacher tells the student, his son, open the seed and see what is in it. And the, the child looks, the shisha opens a seed and it's empty. And then the teacher says, from this emptiness, shunyata, the whole world will appear. It is a powerful nothingness. This is divine nothingness. So in this you live the causal world and we can say that the seeds of your karma, etc., they compose it. So you bring in certain karma and so you have a stubbed nose or a Roman nose and you bring in certain karma. So you have a parent who is abusive or nice, you bring in certain karma. So your body is this way and your mind is this way. and But it's all in the causal body. So this causal body, it never ends. It only ends through moksha. When we achieve breakthrough of our ignorance and our attachment to these bodies and we realize our true self at that body, at that time this seed disappears through knowledge. Just as you are caught up in an emotional knot and you are suffering 
and you are crying and you are miserable and you have created the psychosomatic symptoms now your body is in rashes it is showing up in all kinds of diseases you are suffering and you have created a mini world of that suffering and that belief and the conviction and the symptoms and then a teacher comes and shows you it there is no snake here suddenly everything falls away and it stops biting you has that happened to you mm. that was your mini moksha in terms of that experience how many of you have had that here at vedika how many of your snakes got broken raise your hands those are mini experiences of how there was something and then there was nothing in the same way this whole experience of beingness is really real and we are caught between this so when we die we have our sukshma sharira and every impression has been recorded so we are stealing from the earth nobody knows it is being recorded we are lying nobody knows it it is being recorded and we are doing charity and nobody knows it it is recorded we are speaking our truth and we are being stoned nobody knows it it's being recorded here and here goes into the causal and becomes the seed for the next body and in the next body you are suddenly born in a family of sages why because something was recorded suddenly you encounter a teacher and when you are least expecting help why because something was recorded so we become a creator of our own destiny but we just sit and believe that only this is it this is it and then we end and we negotiate and fight for that one crown but the reality is that even the causal body is not our self so one way of learning in vedanta is what are we not so that we can realize what we are and because brahman is non material because brahman is the truth and everything else is a non reality how can i even explain to you what is brahman i can only explain to you what you are not just as when a student comes to me who is feeling powerless i only have to remind them of not their that they are not powerless and automatically they experience their power because that is their basic when a student is feeling limited i remind them that they are not limited they automatically experience their expansion so what is true what is atman that satchit ananda true existence true knowledge and true bliss which is our nature can be known by first examining what we have bought into and so this is the concept of the three bodies and these three bodies um uh, follow us they follow us and they give us different kind of challenges the challenges of the sthula body is the physical body and that is why we have to use the science of ayurveda to balance it a lot then there are challenges of the sukshma body and only the science of ayurveda understands the sukshma body works with it and then you understand why even talking too much can increase your pain or increase your constipation now you understand there is a sukshma body and the science of yoga helps us purify the sukshma body because the chitta it can be a place to hold on to n number of memories and sometimes those memories can be painful or they can block us or they can arrest us so how do we use this chitta to remember the the <coughs> mahavritti the greatest memory of my true self that must be also there within us somewhere somewhere we remember that we are deserving powerful amazing creatures that is why we fight inequality that is why we rise against disease that is why we do not accept racism that is why we do not stand for abuse why because somewhere hidden is a memory that i am brahman 
I may have got here entangled in something, but that doesn't change who I am. Now with these three bodies, we go through three states of consciousness. The first is the awake state of consciousness called the Jagrat Avastha. In the Jagrat Avastha, there is the, what is the condition of the mind and the internal organs? The condition is that the Antaha Karna or the mind is fully functional. Our emotional faculty, Manas, our rational faculty, Buddhi, our memory faculty, Chitta, our ego faculty, Ahankara, right down to the address and the Facebook password, everything we remember fully open, bloomed. Purna Vikasaha, fully bloomed faculties, we operate and therefore this nature of experience is called the awake state and it is an important state because everything is open and if we can experience knowledge and teaching during this state, so try not to fall asleep, this would be rather useful. <coughs> what is the nature of the experience here? The nature is it's external. We are having experiences external to us and they are concrete, they are concrete and tangible and they are objective. We are sharing a common world. We are all sharing a common classroom. So we have many common experiences and this is called Indra Janyam Prapanchaha which means the world and its transactions are being generated by our Indriya or our senses. Our senses are receiving them, bhokta, and we are acting upon the world, we are also a karta. So we are receiving impressions, we are acting upon them. We are both bhokta and we are karta. And the dominant medium through which we transact this jagrat avastha or awake state is our physical body. We use our physical body. We not only need the indriya internally, we also need the golakam. All the structures need to be fine. The cornea needs to be working. The eardrum cannot be damaged. We need the physical integrity of everything. Like the sukshma sharir alone cannot function. It needs this physical body. I can't imagine that I'll walk up to you. I have to use this body to walk up to you. Now let us look at the dream state. In the dream state, the condition of the internal organs is uh, partially functioning. So, Ardha Vikasaha, where basically what happens is everything is asleep, only one faculty is awake, Chitta or memory faculty. So in this more than the sthula body, because it is asleep, it is dormant, the sukshma body comes alive. But, so it is sukshma body dominant and the memory faculty becomes very important. Now, because the impressions of your day-to-day -day, uh, awake state were recorded, so they are not fresh experiences, they are replay. During the awake state, we collect impressions. During the sleep sleep, we replay them. And we might even replay from some past life. But either way, we will have familiarity. Or we may jumble them up. For example, we may see a horse and we may see ghee. And we may see the horse drinking ghee in a pond of ghee. We can mix them up. So they become non-sequential and even the ego, there's definitely a character which is you. But it's not the ego of the awake state, it is a memory ego. It is a memory ego. And so the nature of the experience is, it's an internal world, private and exclusive to you. It has... Many people or animals or plants or visitors in it, but yet they are only imagined and a whole world is created and the Atman 
bound in this body has to undergo the painful or the happy dream it has no choice until it wakes up it is bound to experience the joy and suffering of that world totally projected by the chittam so we say that it is a vasana janyam prapanchaha which means it is the world of transactions totally generated by our hidden desires and impressions it is not generated by the senses and the dominant medium is definitely the sukshma sharira which is playing a role that is why the dead body does not dream now look at the third state of consciousness it is called deep sleep or sushupti avastha in the deep sleep the state of the internal organs is completely non functional even the chitta falls asleep becomes dormant there is zero cognition neither fresh cognition nor recollection replaying vcr vcd from inside there is nothing so that is why we when we wake up from that sleep we say i was sleeping but during sleep we have no cognition and the nature of the experience is that there is no experience it is a state of blankness it is a state of agnana anubhava experience of ignorance neither of the world which is tangible generated by senses and mind nor the world which is um, subtle and generated by the memory slab there is no world and so when the um, therefore we say that during this time the sthula world the awake world and the dream world they all go into little dormant state during this time and you rest because in a few minutes you have to wake up and start the chase in the awake world forgetting who you are believing in the little story around you or the big story which has made you lose all your sense of humility or you will be or you will wake up from that dream deep sleep and go into a dream and this time all the monsters are chasing you so you never know what experience you get caught so for few minutes there is ignorance and we say by negative sense we say it is the happiest state because there is no world <coughs> and there is no fear of joy being replaced by sorrow and sorrow not ending so this uh, internal fully ignorant person is also you except that your sukshma sharira is resting temporarily so these are your three states although we will discuss later when we continue coming to satsang that there is a fourth state because there is some continuous person who says i am awake i dreamed i deep slept who is that i that i is the observer that i is neither the dreamer nor the waker nor the ignorant that i is the drishta the seer the real you there is something that remained unchanged as each states of consciousness mutually excluding each other came and went one remained eternally the same and that is you otherwise you cannot say i was blissfully asleep i am unaware how the time passed you cannot say because even that ignorance was an experience of ignorance was an observed situation by someone who had not really fallen asleep 
So the one who remains vigilant, alert and unchanged during dream, during sleep and during deep sleep is you. And when we become eternally awake to this person, we say you are in state of moksha. And once you have achieved this oneness with the real you, then when you dream, then when you sleep, then when you deep sleep, it will have a different experience rather than now where we are just chasing our desires and our struggles from every few hours in a brand new world or the same world. Shall I continue? Yes. That would be good because then I can complete the Kosha Panchakam and we are done with understanding the jiva in this short class. Of course, to understand the jiva, it is taking me my whole life. Then we are told, that is not enough. You, who everybody can say you, 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 in the awake world, where in the dream world you only know, only you only know. And in the causal sleep, no, nothing is known. Right? Neither privately nor publicly. On top of that, you have now an understanding of these same states of consciousness and the three bodies, the gross, the subtle and the causal. They are now broken up into five layers or sheets that are surrounding your deepest Atman, your deepest truth which is Atman. The first one is called the Annamaya Kosha which is made up of Annam, food. The essence of the food you eat becomes your body, Annamaya Kosha. And so it is responsible for your structure. It is responsible for your limbs, physical body, physical organs. We can say in our Ayurveda college that Annamaya Kosha is your anatomical system. Okay? And this anatomical system is born out of food that you eat. So therefore Ayurveda's knowledge to change the anatomy of the body, fat to thin, thin to fat, etc, etc, tall, short to tall, can occur only through knowledge of food, not just through meditation. You understand? Because what is made up of can influence that the body can be changed with food. Meditation can only help you calm down enough to eat the right food. But food alone decides your outermost body. So in the first we have studied about the gross body. It, it is the same as the Annamaya Kosha. Inside this now we have three more Koshas. These three more Koshas, they correspond to the subtle body. Subtle body is so important. It has three Koshas. The Inner to the Annamaya Kosha or food body is the Pranamaya Kosha. This has the five pranas and the five sensory organs are functioning here. And so it has ten organs that are being regulated by prana, the pancha prana, as well as the sense organs are highly regulated by the prana. So therefore we can say that the Pranamaya Kosha is the physiological system, do you agree Maheshji, of the human body. So you can have the anatomically correct dead body but it has no movement if the Prana is not there because it does not have the Pranamaya Kosha, the physiology acting and reacting and circulating and channeling and moving things about. Then in the same subtle body we have the second kosha which is called Manomaya Kosha. So Manomaya Kosha is akin to the, um, it, it is the mind plus the memory, chitta 
plus the ahankara, plus the sense organs, and it relates a lot to our desires and motivations. So it's the, if the pranamaya the, was our kriya shakti or our uh, power to act, then manomaya kosha is icha shakti or our power to want. Why would I eat, which is physiology, if I don't want to eat? So the want comes from the manomaya kosha and the hand that will pick up the apple is the anatomy to actually pick up something. So the execution of the act happens at the body level. The, the physiological response to grab the apple happens at the physiological level and the desire or the motivation to pick up the apple and eat happens at the manomaya kosha or the want level or the psychological level. How interconnected are they? And the world is trying to break them apart and heal them separately. And then, why do I want an apple? I have learned from childhood an apple a day keeps the doctor away. So I have learned growing up here in America. If you are grown up in India, you will study ghee every day keeps the vaidya away. <laughs> Culturally, you have learned something. So you have another kosha behind the emotional, psychic mind, psychological mind, which is your cognitive thinking, knowing ability. It is called Vijnana Maya Kosha. This is your Jnana Shakti. This is where you know that you should eat an apple. You have knowledge about it. You are not just salivating looking at it. You don't just want it. But you know that you must eat it because it is time to eat. And so this Vignanamaya Kosha also consists of organs like the sense organs and then the knowing faculty, Buddhi. And it's okay if you don't remember this organ, that organ. The whole goal is to give you a whole amazing knowledge from 10,000 years ago. and no copyrights. Hmm. And, and finally, so this, the, the knowing faculty, the wanting faculty, and then the acting faculty, physiology, they all create the uh, subtle body. And finally you have the fifth or the deepest more which is called Anandamaya Kosha. Anandamaya Kosha is your unconscious personality. It is your hidden personality. You know, the divine creator, the divine creation is so intelligent that it realized that we jivas, as we go through life, we may not be able to handle all the knowledge, all the impressions, and all the emotional heartbreaks so can we have a place where we can keep them so that we don't have a heart attack? So that we don't have a psychosis every day? Well, where does everything go? In this subconscious layer of our personality where also the sanskars or the seeds of say seva. You are doing seva. You develop resistances. You fight through those resistances. You experience laziness. You fight through the laziness and you become from a self selfish person, a selfless person. Then where does this knowledge get stored? There. So it is not only a place for storing your deepest buttons, but also absorbing your excesses. Psychological, existential excesses. And then you, they, they come out when it is conducive, either in another birth or when it is better for you to handle it. So sometimes you come to a place like Vedika, it happens for some students, and then they have a breakdown. They will be normal, 
people functioning in the corporate world and then they'll come here and they will have a breakdown. Short time. Why? Because now it is conducive to release what would have killed me otherwise. And so then you can reprogram yourself. This Ananda Maya Kosh, it has the word Ananda Bliss. It should not be confused that it is my bliss body. Ananda Maya Kosh is only bliss by negative connotation that because you, when you go that deep into the causal body and there is no really world impinging you to take a decision and act, you are in bliss. You are in ignorant bliss. And beyond all of these, you live. They all act on your impulse. When you don't know about it, any of those five bodies can run away with, and you, you go with them. You are kidnapped. Because parts of you live in them. Just like I am the head teacher here and I have many teachers who work with me. And because they work with me, they are empowered, they reflect me, they, they, they strengthen me. And they uh, are someone who uh, I don't have to worry about. And yet, what if there are teachers and I get so comfortable that I don't check if the teacher is in the room or not. If the teacher is teaching Ayurveda or now they are teaching some mixed medicine. This is still my job to find out because I am the head. Now the other teacher may say, I didn't know you wanted Shuddha Ayurved, pure Ayurved. I didn't know. Now that you have told me, I will follow what you told me. So what happens is, because we are so powerful that we can manifest this whole universe, then we can manifest some dysfunction also. And the whole science of Vedanta is remembering what you are not, so it is subservient to you, and what you are is the real truth. Because Sat is Sat, and it cannot, it is not dominated by time, it is always there in past, present, or future. Just like the state of consciousness, it lives no matter where you are, it's always there, the observer. It is, it is eternal existence, complete knowledge and intelligence, self-illumined and totally blissful. So that little bit of bliss we feel here and there is only moieties of bliss of our real nature. Many of us have felt that we were chasing after a person or an object thinking they would be the source of my bliss. But when I just looked and saw that I am chasing, stopped a chase, went inside, calmed down, we found we were covered in bliss. Yes? So it is an objectless, eventless bliss. It is a bliss that is not dependent upon desire fulfillment. Desire and its fulfillment occurs at a much lower kosha level. And so this is the kosha panchakam. So today in a very short time. I covered for you three bodies, gross subtle causal, which are known as Thula Sukshma Karana. I covered Avastha Traya for you, three states of consciousness, Jagrat Awake, Swapna Dream, Sushupti, Deep Sleep. I reminded you that you have Panchakoshas operating for you here on your path to your knowledge. You have anatomical system, physiological system, psychological system, cognitive system and even a absorb control, control boot system, subconscious system. And you are none of that. They all are your systems and you are not. And so the one who says, I am a slave of my mind and emotions, needs Vedant.
we can for example give away our power to our friend we give it away and we really suffer from that failure of power and we really feel weak but the day we wake up that my power is my power can anybody take it tell me yes or no yes or no 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 it's the same thing vedant reminds us of who we are we are atman which is the same as brahman but until such time we know it only as academically and in an abstract way we are jiva who is jiva jiva is nothing but atman identified with all of these five lost in the dream and awake and caught up between the causal karmic seeds the dream world the subtle worlds and the awake worlds till that time we are jiva because only academic i am atman that is why vedanta says ultimately you have to do anubhava experience how there are couple of ways which we will keep understanding so with this i end mm-hmm.